Everybody seemed to have very different feelings on Zig's labeled switch. My hunch is that people like myself with more of a higher language background tend to find it gross because it reminds them of go-tos, uh, while people who maybe have more of a C background tend to see a lot of the benefit of it. However, uh, I read through every single comment on that video, and there were quite a few. Um, and thank, thank you for the discussion. It was a great opportunity to learn. But one of the things that was a really good takeaway is that there's a lot of value for labeled switch from a compiler optimization perspective. And if you were to build something like a finite state machine or a tokenizer. Uh, so what we're going to do today is build a tiny little tokenizer for some really constrained input in Zig using labeled switch. So let's get started. Okay, I've got a folder here called Zig Tokenizer. I'm gonna go ahead and zig in it. This is on Zig 014. This will not work if you're not on 014 or, uh, you know, some form of uh, a master build of Zig from uh, late 2024 forward, I think. Anyways, enough of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up main.zig. I'll make this bigger so people can read it. I haven't had some feedback on that, so I'll try to do better. We'll go ahead and just remove everything in the file and we'll start from scratch. So we're gonna go ahead and import standard library. And what I want to do is pull in STD. We will go ahead and define our main method. So our main, actually, I guess we don't really need a main method for this. Let's, um just define a test. So we'll do test tokenize. Uh, fix that, sorry about that. Okay, so we're here. Let's go ahead and define tokenize. So we're gonna essentially do something like const tokens is equal to try tokenize, tokenize. We'll need to give this an allocator. So we can do the standard testing allocator. And then we need to give this essentially an input. So um, we'll define what an input looks like up here as well. So our input is going to be some numbers and some operands or operators, I suppose. So let's do something like 88 plus 92 minus 31 times 755 divided by two. And then just to make this a little easier on myself, since we're focusing on the switch and not my ability to build a robust tokenizer, uh, we're gonna end it with a new line. Uh, and that gives me something to key off of that says, hey, we're done with this input, stop tokenizing. So assuming this goes well, what we can do is four tokens. We can get our token here. Then we can do, I guess you would normally do an expectation here. I'm just going to print these to standard out using standard debug print. So we'll print out the token and it'll be token dot, um, let's go with value. We need to actually create our tokens as well. So that uh, token type needs to be defined. So we'll start by saying something like, const token type. We're going to use an enum here, and we're going to represent the different types of token that you can have. So we have a number, we have a plus, we have a minus, we have a multiply, we have a divide, and then generally it seems like maybe a good idea to also have an invalid. Uh, I don't necessarily need to return or tokenize the return, since that is just indicating that this is the end of the line, the end of the input. Um, but you could tokenize that too, I guess, if you'd really like. So now that we have that, we can define a token type. Oh, I'm missing a semicolon. I was wondering why my formatting was off. So token, struct, and then what we can do is say, hey, this is going to be a type. We'll say token type. And then it's going to have a value. And since we're working with strings, we don't necessarily have to convert them. So we'll just continue to treat them as strings for now. Maybe not the best solution, but again, uh, this is a video on labeled switch and not robust tokenizers. 
Okay, now that we've defined our token type, we're just going to write a function called tokenize. So we'll implement that tokenizer. It's going to take in an allocator, standard mem allocator. Oops, let's fix that. Okay, uh, and then it's going to take in an input. That input's going to be a const u8. And then the return type for this is going to be something like um, error. I think it would be out of memory or tokens, right? Yeah, token. That makes sense. Tokens is equal to, uh, we're going to collect these in an array list. So we'll create an array list of token. We'll init, we'll init <laughs> um, with our allocator. And then we can do uh, a variable to essentially keep track of where we're at in the input. So I'm going to call this i. Uh, we'll set it to a u size, make it equal to zero. And then we want to get the, um, I guess we don't need to get the first character since we're using labeled switches. We can go ahead and define our label. So I'm just going to call this SW, short for switch. You probably should come up with a better name for your labeled switches so it's more obvious. But this is the first value that will be used in that labeled switch. So if we say input index i, it'll take the zeroth character from our input string. So in our test case, that'll take the first eight. The important thing here is knowing that that value inside the switch, sorry, I'm pointing at my screen like you can see it. The value after the word switch in parentheses is going to be replaced every time we use the continue operator with our switches label and another value. You'll see what that looks like in just a second. So we have a couple different cases. So the first case is essentially that this is 0 to 9. So it's going to be a range for us. And then we'll handle that. We have a terminating case, which is going to be that um, new line that we talked about. And the terminating case is going to be the simplest. I'm just going to go ahead and type that in. It's going to be break SW. So we're just going to break the switch. Break with the switch is kind of an interesting term, but with the labeled switches, you can continue and break just like you would a loop. So uh, you can kind of think of them similar to a loop. Oh, I need a semicolon there. And then um, we're essentially going to have a lot of the exact same thing over and over again for the rest of these. So we have a plus. We essentially want to token out all of our operators. And I guess what we could do instead is when we think about this from a token perspective, does it make sense to have an individual token for each type of operator? Or maybe we have an operator token and include metadata about the token. Um, tons of different ways to break this apart, depending on what's valuable for you. We'll just do what we've already done so far, which is a, a token type for add, subtract, multiply, divide, and invalid. Okay, so um, this one's going to essentially, we're going to append our token. And we need to give this a type TYP is what we called it. So this will be a, sorry, not minus, this will be a plus. And then we want to give this a value. And the value here is just going to be equal to input i dot dot i plus one. And then we want to increment i. So we want to uh, continually move our our index so that we are processing the next item in the input. And then we're going to use this continue keyword that I've mentioned a couple times now. We're going to continue SW, which is our switch, and we're going to pass in input I for that value. Hoping this will format. It did not format. That's a shame. Okay. So Whatever we input i in this case, whatever we call continue sw with, again, is going to be substituted out into this value right up here, everything inside the parentheses, and then it will execute the switch again. And it will continue doing that until we break or we run into an error case. Uh, we're going to try to avoid error cases. So most of these are the exact same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into visual here. I'm going to... Go ahead and yank that. We'll come down here, paste it, paste it, 
paste it. Zig format, please. I'm going to go ahead and clean up this formatting really quick, and then we'll be right back. Okay, I've fixed that formatting. Most of these are going to be the exact same. Just the thing that we're keying off of is different. So this next one's going to be minus. And then we're just going to change the type here from plus to minus. Uh, let's see what else. This one right here will be um, an asterisk. And we'll come down here and we'll change plus to multiply. And this one right here will be uh, forward slash, which will be divide. So we'll change this to divide. And then there are two more cases that we don't actually have handled yet. So the simplest one will be blank white space. And since we're not actually tokenizing white space because it doesn't really matter to us, all we're going to do here is increment our index so we continue to move forward in our input. And then we're going to continue SW input I, just like before. So we'll just, we'll not tokenize this part. And instead what we'll do is increment our index and then redo the switch on the next piece of input. Uh, besides that, we also don't have an invalid case that we have handled yet. So let's handle that. So we'll come up here and yank five lines. Come over here and we'll paste those. Go back up and add the comma that we were forgetting. And then this case is not going to be a specific character. This is just going to be an else case. So in this case, if it's something that our tokenizer doesn't support, we're going to label this as an invalid. And then we'll collect the value. Okay, the last thing we need to do here is outside of our switch, we will return tokens to owned to owned slice. Give that a shot. It looks like I have a syntax error on 62, missing a semicolon. And then on 65, I have one as well. Yep. There we go. And that looks pretty good. Okay, I've got another tab open here pointing to the Zig tokenizer. So I'm just gonna Zig build test and we'll see how this runs. Uh, error union type is ignored. Oh, each of these tokens append need to be a try tokens append. So we can just go ahead and percent %s grab tokens.append swap that over to try tokens.append. And I think that should cover it. Five substitutions, that looks to be about right. Let's go ahead and write this. And then I'll tab back over here and run zigbuild test again. I'm not quite sure why we're not seeing output for zigbuild test. So I'm gonna take a look at this and see what I can come up with. You know, a good reason why it might not actually be tokenizing anything is because as far as the meat and potatoes go, we aren't tokenizing anything. Uh, so I need to actually tokenize these numbers, right? So uh, these will be slightly more complicated because we're not using single digit numbers, but it, it's really nothing uh, that complicated. So um, what we can do is essentially something like const. We want to get the value that we start at. So this will be a u size. We can set it equal to i while i is less than input dot length, 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 sorry. And uh, we essentially want to check that the next value that we're working with is a digit. So if i is less than or equal to zero, sorry, greater than or equal to zero, and i is less than or equal to nine, then it is a digit. So we can just continue to iterate. And while we're iterating, all we need to do is increment our index in the input. So i plus one should take care of it. And then just like before, we need to tokens append. We're appending a type of token. The token type, the TYP, I should say, is number. And then the and then the value here is going to be uh, input start dot dot i should cover it. 
And we need to, of course, continue SW input I. Unfortunately, my formatter does not like the labeled switches in Zig. So hopefully I can get that fixed. Um, but I think that should cover it. So let's go back over here. Let's run Zig build test. Give it another go. Same issue as last time. We'll just add a try right here. Run Zig build test again. Give it a go. See if it prints out our tokens. Okay, that is taking way too long. Uh, I think we have an infinite loop. So let's find that infinite loop and fix it. We will have an infinite loop because I made a very important typo here. So we're checking if I is essentially a, uh, a zero or nine um, and comparing it. Uh, but what we actually need to be doing here is checking if the input index I is that value. So let's give this another run and hopefully we'll be finished debugging. We are not. Oh, uh, we, sure. Okay, we're more or less finished. We need to not leak memory, uh, but we can take care of that here in just a second. So let's go fix that up. So we get our standard testing allocator. We get our tokens. Once we have finished with our token, we can essentially standard testing allocator dot free. And then we just want to free the token value. And then we can do standard testing allocator dot free tokens. And we just want to defer that. I think that should fix our leak. Let's run it again. Oh, small addendum here. We actually don't want to free the token value. We can just free the tokens up here. Uh, so let's give this a run. And you can see here, uh, run test. And here's our output. We have token 88 plus 92 minus 31 times 755 divided by 2. And that should match 88 plus 92 minus 31 times 755 divided by 2. And then again, our uh, line break is essentially our terminator. So yeah, we have this working. Um, I definitely, circling this all back to the original point of this video, I definitely see why the labeled switch is useful. Um, this, is, this is fairly... Actually writing this feels much easier to follow than the example on the labeled switch that uh, I think I actually have that up. Yeah, this example right here feels maybe a little contrived. So it's hard to see the value of it. Um, but it is a really clear example of a really basic labeled switch and then really basic switch in a loop that is what you would be doing before Zig 14. So I see the value in it, but... Um, I should say I see what this example is trying to do, but I think actually having like a tiny tokenizer like this really starts to highlight why this is maybe a valuable pattern and something you might want to do. Anyways, uh, I'd love to know your thoughts on labeled switches. If you haven't already told me them, which so many people have, um, let me know in the comments below. Thanks and have a great day.